Hi, I am Tom Christensen of Neurochrome. In this short video, I will show you how to perform two basic measurements on an audio amplifier. First, we'll measure the amplifier's DC offset. Then we'll measure its gain. We'll do this using a digital multimeter and a signal generator. If you don't have a signal generator, you probably have a smartphone. And a smartphone or any other media player can be used as a signal generator. These measurements are particularly useful if you just repaired an amplifier or you just built an amplifier and you just want a quick sanity check of whether the amplifier works or not before you plug it into your test speaker. If you end up finding this video useful or informative or you have learned something, uh, drop me a like or subscribe to my channel or better yet, log on to neurochrome.com, order one of my products or make a donation as a thank you. Let me introduce you to the test equipment and to the amplifier under test. This right here is a Fluke 73. It is a handheld digital multimeter. It's roughly 30 years old and it just keeps on ticking. Up here is a signal generator. It is an HP uh, 33120A. And just for a point of comparison, I will compare the readings on the handheld meter with my benchtop meter, which is an HP 34401A. The amplifier is a Neurochrome Modulus 86 that I completed last night. We'll be measuring the DC offset and the gain. Let's start with the DC offset. The DC offset of an amplifier is the DC voltage that the amplifier puts out when the input is connected to zero volts. So how do we connect the input to zero volts? Well, the easiest is with a shorting plug. So I've made one of these, and since this amplifier has balanced input, this is an XLR shorting plug. So all I've done here is inside this plug, I've connected pin one to pin two to pin three with a couple of short pieces of wire. And with all three pins connected, that means the amplifier will see zero volts. So I'll just plug this in. And now all we have left to do is to put the meter probes on the output of the amp. Before I do that though, let me just point out that many uh, digital multimeters, if you just put them on the DC voltage setting, they're not all that sensitive. This multimeter has a uh, higher sensitivity setting, um, the 300 millivolt DC range. So I will use that because I expect the DC output to be quite low. So I will use the red probe for plus and the black probe for minus and plug those into the amplifier output like that. And it registers minus 0 0.6 millivolts or minus 600 microvolts, which is very low for a DC offset. Just as a sanity check, let's just compare that real quick with the six and a half digit bench top meter. And I measure minus 573 microvolts. So the 30 year old handheld meter is actually pretty darn close to the calibrated six and a half digit meter, which is impressive. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, the point here is though that the DC offset of this channel is low. And that indicates at least so far, um, the amplifier is working or that channel is. Now we just repeat the measurement for the other channel. The DC offset of this channel measures uh, minus 0.3 um, millivolts or minus 300 microvolts according to the handheld meter. According to the benchtop meter it measures minus 324 microvolts. So once again this uh, 30 year old guy actually uh, holds his own. Now let's measure the gain of the amplifier. The gain of an amplifier is simply its output voltage divided by its input voltage at some reference frequency. So for the reference frequency, I have my signal generator providing 400 hertz at one volt RMS. That comes down this coax cable and goes through a feed-through terminator. Because one thing you gotta know about uh, laboratory uh, signal generators is that they require termination. So the terminator handles that, and then I adapt to an RCA connector. That will need to connect to the input of the amp. This is an unbalanced output from the signal generator and an a balanced input on the amp. So for that connection, I use this RCA to XLR adapter 
can never have too much too many adapters so i will just plug this into the amplifier like so and now let's measure the output voltage of the signal generator because that will be the input voltage to the amplifier i'll do that by touching the negative probe of the meter to the RCA shell and then touching the positive probe of the meter to the RCA center conductor. The meter is set to measure AC voltage and it reads 1.006 volts AC. So now let's plug this signal into the amplifier. And some of you might be going, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're making the assumption that the amp does not load the signal generator, and that is entirely true. I am making that assumption, and I know that the input uh, impedance of this amplifier is 48 kilo ohms, and the output impedance of the signal generator is 50 ohms. So the 48 kilo ohms will not significantly load um, the signal generator. To test this assumption, I could pull the top cover off and measure the input voltage uh, at the inside of that uh, XLR jack, but I don't really feel like pulling the cover off right now. So I'm just gonna go with um, that my assumption is valid. And um, now let's measure the output voltage. So same deal, negative probe on the minus and positive probe on the plus output of the amplifier. And the amp provides 10.07 volts. So 10.07 divided by 1.006 is almost exactly 10.0. Uh, so this amplifier has a gain of 10.0 volts per volt. That corresponds to a gain of 20 dB. That's a bit low for an audio amplifier, but that is actually exactly how I designed it because that results in a better gain structure in the overall playback chain. Uh, that could be a topic for a different video on another day. Now, what to do if you don't have a dedicated signal generator? Well, you probably have a smartphone with a headphone jack, or if you're on the Apple platform, then the lightning to headphone adapter. Oh, yeah, another adapter. <laughs> and uh, you can probably dig up one of these cables that has a three and a half millimeter uh, TRS in one end or headphone jack in one end and dual RCAs in the other. And with that, and a uh, wave file that contains a 400 hertz test tone, you can accomplish the same measurement. And this is where the website wavetones.com comes in. To create a test tone, simply visit wavetones.com, type in 400 hertz for the frequency and five seconds for the duration, then click the download wave file button. Play the downloaded file on repeat on your media player and adjust the volume level on the media player until you get the desired output voltage. Some of you may wonder why I chose 400 Hertz for my test frequency and not uh, one kilohertz, which is the more common reference frequency in audio. That is because these uh, handheld multimeters tend to have very limited bandwidth. And I mean, basically these meters are designed for measuring uh, mains voltage. So they will be able to measure uh, AC voltages in the frequency range of 48 to 64 ish uh, Hertz or thereabout. Um, some of the better ones like this Fluke 73 will be able to measure 440 Hertz because that is a common um, distribution frequency in aircraft. So to illustrate this point, I will measure the bandwidth of this meter. And I will do that by using my um, signal generator and plug that directly into the meter. So for that, we'll need another adapter. That is a banana plug to BNC adapter. I'll plug that into the meter and I will plug the AC or excuse me, the signal generator output directly into the meter. And it still reads 1.006 volts AC. So now let's turn up the frequency. I'm going to try, let's see, one kilohertz. So now the voltage has drooped a bit already. We're at 991 millivolts. So let's crank up the frequency some more. Uh, two kilohertz, three kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, let's just do 5.1 kilohertz, 
5.2 kilohertz. All right. So I chose this uh, specific number, 706 millivolts, because that is um, one volt divided by the square root of two. And where the hell did that come from? <laughs> that is the minus three dB point of this meter. So this meter has a bandwidth or a minus three dB bandwidth to be specific uh, of 5.2 kilohertz. That's not a whole lot. Um, if I plug this voltage into my benchtop meter and have that set for reading uh, volts AC, I'm getting 1.058 um, volts AC. So that is still flat at even at five kilohertz. And I've measured the bandwidth of it and it's um, above three megahertz. So um, the handheld meters do lose out a little bit in, in that race, but it doesn't have to be a race. This is perfectly adequate for measuring the gain and the DC offset of an amplifier. I measured the gain of the second channel of this amplifier. That measures 10 volts per volt as well, or 20 dB if you will. So with both channels measuring the correct gain and low DC offset, I now have enough confidence in this amplifier to plug it into my test speaker and play some music. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it helpful or informative or you learned something, please make sure you click uh, like and subscribe to my channel. And better yet, if this has inspired you to go and measure some amplifiers of your own, perhaps build one, go to neurochrome.com. I offer many circuit boards that allow you to build your own amplifiers.